Welcome back. At the end of the last video, we had a GUI uh, that we could use to edit movies uh, and information about movies. Um, and while this GUI was fine in appearance, we were willing to work with it. Um, we found that it really wasn't uh, all that useful in the sense that there were aspects of it that that didn't do anything. Um, and the problem is that right now we only have enough information to or enough knowledge to make it so that we can uh, have our menu items and buttons interact and this application has menu items and they do indeed interact with the user the way that we want to um, but we don't have any buttons and what we do have is we have a list here and we'd like to have it so that we can select things from the list like this and that when we click on them their information should pop up over here I know it would also be nice if when we edit things over here if that goes into uh, the changes on this side. So that is functionality that we need to add. And right now we don't know how to make anything other than menu items or buttons interactive with the user. So we need to add that to our to our knowledge base. So the way that Scala does this is to use something called a a called publishers and reactors. Okay, publishers are things that uh, signal that something has happened and reactors are things that are supposed to react to the, the stuff that's happened. Turns out that every GUI component is both a publisher and a reactor and as we'll see there are some of the GUI components have additional publishers inside of them that publish specific types of events. So if you have a publisher and you want to listen to things that it is doing, you need to uh, call a method called listen to. Uh, if you are done listening to something, you can also call def to. Um, and in our case, the first thing that we would like to have in our interactivity is to make it so that our movie list uh, is will listen to when the user selects items and then change the information in the title field, the year field, and the rating box, as well as the description area, based on that. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some code kind of nested inside of the movie list here. Um, and the first thing we want to do is we need to, to listen to something. Now, it could listen to itself. We would call that listen to this, the current object. But it turns out that what we want to listen to is the selections that are made on the list. And if you go and you look in the API and you look under list view, you will see that there is actually an object in here called selection, which is itself a publisher. So that's what we are going to listen to. We're going to listen to selection. And it knows what selection we're talking about because we're nested inside of the list view here. So when we start listening to the selection, we will get whatever selection events um, come through. Now, in order to act on those, we have to add reactions. And all of our reactors have the ability to add reactions into them. I'm just going to go ahead and type in what the syntax looks like and then we can talk about what this actually means. Now we'll modify this some. That should be plural. So for example the list view if we were to come back or actually yeah the list view since we're inside of it it has a reactions uh, which is of type reactions and in the syntax here uh, you can see that we are adding something onto this and it's just curly braces with a case inside of it this is a piece of Scala syntax that we haven't seen before this is something called a partial function so you can actually build these wherever you want if you just put curly braces with cases inside of it it's kind of like a match statement 
which happens to be missing the match part of it. Okay, That defines a partial function. Now, the difference between a partial function and a normal function is that a normal function is supposed to be callable on every value of the appropriate type. So, for example, if you write a function and it takes as an argument an int, the idea is that it's going to do whatever it does for all ints. Okay? That's the idea of a, of a complete function, a normal function. A partial function doesn't have to do that. A partial function can be limited to say, I only work on certain things. And in this case, we're going to make it so our partial function only cares about certain types of events. Now, right now, this listens to anything that, that comes in because this lowercase e here gets bound to any variable that's passed in. Now, what's going to be passed into here are events. And these are inside of a separate package. So we've been playing with Scala Swing. All the events that we're going to deal with are inside of Scala Swing event. And as you can see, there are a fair number of these events. Uh, so we need to have the ability to um, you know, change this up uh, or to, to find the appropriate one of these. And in fact, that was why I put in a print statement here was that a lot of times you don't know in advance what events you're going to be listening to. And you can go through this list, and in, in this case, it turns out we might think that a list change or list changed or list selection changed, something like that seems like a very reasonable event. But one way to know for certain what your what you are being uh, passed inside of your reactions is just to print it. So if you make a case with just a variable name, it binds to anything, and you can print that thing out. And now if we run this, and we go ahead and we open our file. When I click here, you'll notice something got printed out over there. And the thing that got printed out was actually selection changed. It was not list selection changed. So that is the type of event that we care about. So inside of our case here, I'm actually going to make it so it only responds to the selection changed events. I don't want to care about anything else. So this is a partial function that will work for any event, and we're calling it E, that is of the type selection changed. And what I want to do is to not print it out, but instead to act upon it. And what I want to do is I want to know what they selected. And actually, I'm going to remember that in a var up here. Uh, actually, no. Hmm. Have to think about. No, we can. We're good with not doing that. Uh, we can ask for what index is being selected any time. But I want to fill in all of these fields. So, for example, I want the title field to be uh, to have its text set equal to the title of the movie. Uh, so the question is, how do we find that? Well, we can go back to the API and look inside of selection. And selection has a number of things that will tell us uh, what is selected. So for example, there is indices, where it will give you a numeric value, and there is items. Now, of course, one of the challenges here is that a list will actually allow you to select multiple things uh, by default. Um, and we might actually want to have the ability to change that, that to turn that off, uh, though at this point we don't really care so much. Um, in fact, we could change it here with the, the changing the interval mode um, in this. So what we want to do is we want to get off of uh, the first index. And in fact, lead index will inevitably give us that information. So we can come inside of here and actually just to make sure, print line e dot lead. Oh wait, no, that would this is the uh, selection dot lead index. And now if we run this, Oh, this error, error, not found, type selection changed. 
that error should tell you normally that you're probably missing an import statement. So if we import that, we open our file 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, so it is doing what we want there, uh, giving us just the index. So what we can do, let's say val index, or actually how about val movie equals movies sub selection dot lead index. Okay, now we might find that there are some problems with this, uh, but hey, for now we're just going to ignore that possibility. Um, and I want to set title field dot text equal to movie dot title. Year field dot text equals movie dot year dot to string. Um, rating combo box dot hmm now there's an interesting question what do we set on the combo box well go and we ask the API so if we go into the API here we can look for various things that uh, we can set on this, um, it like the uh, list has a selection, and you can s set the item in it. So let's come back over here. Dot selection. Dot item equals movie. Dot rating and description area dot text equals movie dot description we can save that we can run this we open our file we click on Bambi now bingo uh, I can change that just to make sure that it is being reset um, and that is indeed the functionality that we wanted to have. Uh, so we'll pause at this point and come back and add some more functionality in the next video.